excuse me. Uh, can you tell me how to get to Princeton? Yeah, so you take the uh, State Street, then the Quick Bridge Road, and you get wait, 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 wait. Uh, it's too complicated. There's got to be an easier way. Oh, sure. Take a look at this. Cool. Visitors and New Jerseyans alike can now use their smartphones to enjoy narrated travels in George Washington's footsteps as the Crossroads of the American Revolution National Heritage Area introduces its 10 Crucial Days audio tour. Travelers will follow the route of key events that turned the tide of the Revolutionary War in the very spots where they happened. Right into the driveway with the wooden fences ahead to enter Princeton Battlefield State Park. The home in front of you, the Thomas Clark. You will hear these events unfold through the experiences of the people who were there, in their own words. The college is in a very ruinous situation. Thank you everyone for joining us. I'm Janice Selinger, Executive Director of Crossroads of the American Revolution. And we're pleased to introduce you to our 10 Crucial Days smartphone audio tour. Just a few days before the anniversary of the historic events that inspired it. We have a wide range of people joining us today. Some of those who helped us make this tour a reality members of the media, as well as funders, state officials, and members of New Jersey's history community. While we would have liked to do this in person, we're glad you could join us virtually to learn about this new way to explore the state's revolutionary heritage. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, Crossroads of the American Revolution Association is a not-for-profit that manages the National Heritage Area of the same name, which aspires to connect the people and places of New Jersey's rich revolutionary heritage to inspire community pride, stewardship, and civic engagement. We work with state, local, and national partners to promote and enhance New Jersey's revolutionary era historical sites and landscapes. The 10 Crucial Days smartphone audio tour we'll be demonstrating today is part of our ongoing effort to capitalize on New Jersey's many diverse revolutionary stories to drive heritage tourism. We're also excited to tell you that the tour will be available in Spanish as well in the next few weeks. We've been able to launch this tour thanks to the financial support of our funders, the National Park Service, the FM Kirby Foundation, the George A. Old Jr. Trust, and the Friends of Washington Crossing Park in Pennsylvania. With that, I'd like to introduce Crossroads trustee Patrick Murray, who's leading the development of our audio tours statewide. Thank you, Janice. Uh, so this is uh, an idea uh, that we've uh, been developing for, for quite some time at Crossroads. In fact, uh, for, for many, many years, we've been looking at different ways to try to use uh, technology uh, to get people out and about uh, and into these incredible resources uh, that we have in New Jersey and to kind of introduce them to stories that they may not know that, that ever existed. And it started with some conversations that we had with our friends uh, at the Washington Rochambeau Revenu Revolutionary Route, uh, which, as you know, uh, runs from uh, New England down to uh, Virginia as the uh, final march of the uh, Continental and French forces uh, to uh, the battle and victory in Yorktown. Uh, what we decided to do is to start to develop these tours on our own, starting with the 10 crucial days. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, specifically in a second, but overall, the concept that we wanted to, to kind of promote here is that the stories that we tell in New Jersey are, you, are really unique, and they're, they're stories that you don't get necessarily in places like Massachusetts or Pennsylvania or Virginia. So sure, there's a lot of overlap, but in addition to the fact that George Washington spent 
a quarter of his time as commander in chief here in New Jersey, more than in any other state or colony during the American Revolution. The fact that over 600 battles and skirmishes were fought in New Jersey more than any other state or colony uh, in, the, in the revolution are just part of the story. Uh, the fact that Washington was here and crisscrossed and we were at, at the crossroads of the American Revolution between New York and Philadelphia means that the people of New Jersey, the, one of the most diverse states then, the most diverse states now, uh, suffered in a way, uh, experiences were in a way uh, that was really unique and, and intense in, in many ways. Decisions that people had to make from all walks of life, whether they were a, a landowner, whether they were uh, women, children, uh, enslaved, servant, immigrant, uh, that there were choices that needed to be made. And we wanted to tell those stories as well, uh, because that's what makes it unique. That's what makes our national brand as the crossroads of the revolution uh, that, that compelling. So the stories that we're going to tell as we uh, develop these tours are, are going to focus on the combination of these high profile events and the stories stories on the ground and how they impacted people. And you'll get a taste of that in the first tour. Uh, but to show you what our plan is overall is that, uh, you know, here is our kind of proposed map that will kind of network across the entire state of New Jersey um, as we develop tours. Uh, in addition to the 10 Crucial Days tour, we're about to develop uh, the, the tour, a tour that goes uh, the road to Morristown from Princeton to, to Morristown and covers many of the stories along that way. Uh, we have, uh, we anticipate getting a grant funding from the New Jersey Historic Trust uh, to do three tours in North Jersey uh, that include uh, the retreat from uh, uh, Fort Lee in uh, as far as Elizabeth. We're also going to take a, a tour that focuses specifically on diversity and diversity in the state um, in that area between uh, Newark and Elizabeth, and also a tour from uh, Elizabeth to uh, Morristown, which uh, covers uh, not only the battles of Springfield and Connecticut farms, but also stories about uh, uh, women in the war, which is a key highlight of, of those stories and, and enables us to, to present some, some interesting things along the way. One of the things that we wanted to do with these tours, as this map uh, shows you, is to connect, to connect big sites to little sites, to connect uh, scenic drives with tours through urban cityscapes where, where maybe major things happen, important things happen, but the cityscape doesn't look like it uh, did back then. Uh, and we can create the sense of, of, of running through those, uh, those areas uh, by using these, the audio tours and the kind of the techniques of, of good sound effects and, um, and good storytelling to kind of, you know, bring people into places that they might not have thought of going before and seeing all the incredible things that they uh, can do and uh, experience there, not just with the tour itself, not just with the historic resources, but also culturally, restaurants, uh, you know, di dining, shopping, whatever uh, it happens to be, that, they, that this becomes a, a full package of things that we can bring people in. Uh, as you can see, some of the nodes of, the, of this tour map, you know, extend to the edge of Philadelphia, to extend to the edge of New York, uh, connecting big sites like Washington Crossing, like Monmouth Battlefield, like Morristown National Historical Park uh, as nodes um, to get people in and out of, of these places and, and through towns that they would have never thought to travel through before. I'm going to stop the share now and talk a little bit about uh, 10 Crucial Days and how that, that came about. Obviously, you know, if we're talking about the brand of, of uh, New Jersey and Crossroads of the American Revolution, you know, the number one uh, event that people think of, probably, you know, one of the most important events, uh, I think any historian would say, in the Revolutionary War, and I think many would also say probably one of the most important events in uh, the history of the United States is the, the Battle of Trenton the, and the crossing of the Delaware and everything that was involved in that. Uh, turn, obviously turn the tide of the war. When we talk to people outside of the state of New Jersey, um, you know, one of the things that, that they know about the American Revolution is Washington crossed the Delaware. They don't always know where that happened though. In fact, many of them think it happened in the state of Delaware. Um, so, uh, and, I, and I know that because we've, we've actually done some polling and asked people some of these questions. So this is a way to get people to really kind of understand it better and understand the geography uh, of it a lot better and really see how 
it was the, the, these events were, were such an interesting and uh, part of uh, you know life in the 18th century. And by interesting, I mean just just you know these this, these were not battles fought out in the middle of a field someplace. Uh, you know, there's a combination of field battles and urban warfare. Uh, what is interesting about the and great about this particular story is that it involves a, the prelude of you know before Washington crosses the Delaware, he has to cross from someplace. Um, and obviously, this follows a probably the darkest days of the war in um, after the retreat from Fort Lee and the encampment in Bucks County, uh, and then uh, this series of, of, of events over ten days uh, that just really uh, changed uh, the, the tide. And we wanted to convey that. So our tour, which takes you from uh, from Bucks County, starting at the Thompson Neely House and the encampment there and the soldiers' graves through Washington Crossing Historic Park in uh, Pennsylvania, across to Washington Crossing State Park in, in New Jersey, uh, along the route of uh, the march to Trenton, in th and through Trenton, following uh, both battles, and then out and up to Princeton uh, along the way, uh, talking about both the American movements and the continental movements. But along that way, we're also talking about the experience of Quaker communities. Uh, we are talking about the experience of uh, African-American soldiers uh, who many people do not know that uh, that the forces, were, the continental forces were integrated uh, and more integrated than they would be uh, at any other time uh, in, in American history until President Truman desegregated the, the troops in 1948. Uh, and so these are stories that we want to focus on. We focus obviously on the on a lot of big events in, in the this 30 miles that we pack in. There's, there's so much uh, that's going on there. But as if we expand our tours out, we'll be able to spend even more time talking about the impact. Uh, for example, many of these African-American soldiers uh, who served uh, in the Battle of Trenton and uh, subsequently in the uh, encampments uh, in Morristown and in Middlebrook during subsequent years passed up and down uh, this area and many of them settled, uh, decided that this was a great place to settle and you had an African-American community uh, develop in the, around the Sauerland Mountain region. Uh, with, with a number of these soldiers who decided to stick around here. Uh, so these are the kinds of stories that we wanna tell as uh, we move forward with this tour. Uh, so with that, I just wanna point out, you know, the, the, the tour that we give has, uh, uh, Amy is gonna talk about um, how it works in, in a second, but it's, you know, little vignettes, little podcasts. Um, we cannot replicate uh, what Roger Williams does on his bus tour. Uh, but what we can do is provide a snippet of it that you can do at any time that you want to do it. Um, you can hop in your car at any time and be able to do this. And the idea is that you can get in your car, take the tour, stop. If, if there's something that really catches your interest, you pause the tour and do it. If there's some place you want to move on, you just continue to move on. And that's the great thing about this tour. You can do it at your own pace whenever you want to do it. Um, and, and that's going to be the, the, the key for this, particularly with, uh, you know, with COVID, with, with many places not open, with some of the sites that we pass and talk about not open normally, but you can still get an experience there by using these audio tours and these little clips to kind of get a sense of putting yourself in that scene. Uh, and so uh, that's, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about <clears throat> Uh, the contributors to that in a minute. Um, but what I want to do now is turn it over to Amy so she can uh, walk you through exactly how uh, the technology of this tour uh, works. Thanks, Patrick. Um, I'm Amy Osterhout. I'm the program manager at Crossroads. I'm going to do a little tech run through here. Um, so I know on the video at the very end, there, there was a QR code to download the tour app, um, which we will also be sharing at the end of this. So no uh, rush to, to scan that. So I have an iPhone. I'm going to be showing you how to access the tour on an iPhone. Um, so I have the app store open here and the app that our tour is hosted on is called Travel Stories. Um, stories with a Y-S, though you can also spell it uh, S-T-O-R-I-E-S and it will still come up. Um, and it is this first Travel Stories green bubble. Um, I already have it downloaded on my phone, so I'm gonna hit open. And when you first open the tour, uh, the nearby pin, it'll ask you to share your location, um, which you wanna say always, so you can get the driving directions, but then it will sort the closest tours to you by how far away you are. 
Um, so I'm in South Jersey, so I'm about 30 miles away from Trenton, but if you are right within Trenton or in Mercer County, it will likely be closer to the top of your list. Um, you can also find it through the map if you shows all the tours throughout the country, but if you zoom way into New Jersey, um, we are this above Trenton green bubble here. Um, your other option, of course, is to search 10 crucial days and it will be the first one that pops up. And when you are ready to download it, uh, the first time you are ready to take the tour, it will be the green or bluish green download arrow. You're gonna hit that. It will download the tour to your phone. So you're able to take it even without Wi-Fi connection. Um, the tour takes about 90 minutes. It is starts at the Thompson Neely House in New Hope, PA, and it takes you to the Princeton Battle Monument in Princeton. Um, driving directions are built in, so I will show. Travel Stories. Welcome to the Crossroads of the American Revolution 10 Crucial Days Driving Tour. On this tour, you will follow the routes of both Continental and British troops during one of the most pivotal episodes in the struggle for American independence. The tour combines storytelling as you drive with the opportunity to visit some remarkable historic sites and parks. You will hear about events that turned the tide of the Revolutionary War through the words of those who served on the front lines. And you will also learn how the local population, people like you and me, experienced this conflict. We'll meet you at the next site on your map. <laughs> For more information about how this tour works, click on the Information button located in the bottom left corner of your map screen. Um, as she said, if you click the, the small I in the bottom left, you can find out more about what Crossroads does, um, more specifics about the tour. The beauty of this is you can really hop on at any site and start the tour. It will kick in uh, driving directions for you. So again, here's the start of the Thompson Neely House up in New Hope, and it takes you down. Um, you'll hear about river encampments. It will take you through Washington Crossing Historic Park, right across to the State Park in New Jersey, um, and then down through to Trenton, past the airport there. Um, it takes you along Route 29, and then you will hit the old barracks, um, the Battle Monument. We have a stop about the engagement in Mill Hill Park. Um, and then up through Lawrenceville, all the way up to the Stony Brook Friends Meeting House and Princeton Battlefield, um, and ultimately ending at the monument. Uh, so I'm going to play a short stop, which again, the beauty of this is if you are on Route 29 in Trenton and you want to start listening from there, uh, as soon as you get on and open this app, it will begin to play directions. Um, and here is one of the stops that we have. As you follow along the river here, General Sullivan's troops would have been marching just a block inland. It was at about this point where his division reached the Hessian outpost at an occupied farmstead known as the Hermitage. About the same time, General Green's division encountered the other Hessian outpost at the shop of a cooper or barrel maker to the north. The plan worked. The Americans surprised both Hessian units and easily forced them to retreat into town. Private Greenwood, who was with Sullivan's division, recalled the moment the battle commenced. Between 7 and 8 o'clock, as we were marching near the town, the first intimation I received of our going to fight was the firing of a six-pound cannon at us. As we had been in the storm all night, we were not only wet through and through ourselves, but our guns and powder were wet also, so that I do not believe one would go off. When we were all ready, we advanced, and although there was not more than one bayonet to five men, orders were given to charge bayonets and rush on. And rush on we did. Um, and then the final thing I will show you within the app is uh, this three bullet point up in the upper left corner is you can see all of the stops um, at once and you can explore them at your own will, whether or not you're on the road. Um, and we also have not necessarily spoken word stops, but we do have um, the markers along the route uh, listed so you can see them. Uh, the other option we have, and I'm going to stop sharing this screen, um, we have the ability to also let you explore it from home. So you don't have to necessarily be in your car to um, see what's going on. 
and I will show you on both our website and on the Travel Stories website. Um, and again, these both will be links that I will put in the chat after I'm done sharing my screen. Um, let me get that panel away. So this is on our website. Um, it is a remote widget that if you click play, um, it will take you essentially to the map with all of the routes on the side. And naturally, since you are not taking the live version, you can click around and explore them from your, for yourself. Um, it's all the same stops. It's all the same photos, script, music, um, just if you're not in your car able to take it. Uh, so this is on our website. And it is also available on Travel Stories website, um, where we have this landing page you can find all of their tours on this tours tab. Um, again, I'm in New Jersey, so the 10 Crucial Days one is the most recent one and the closest to me, so that pops up. Um, and we have all the photos. We have some sample stories here to explore remotely. And then if you also click this Explore the Tour Remotely, you get the same widget that we have on our website. Um, so again, I'll be throwing some uh, links to these in the chat. And then at the very end of the tour, that QR code will also come up on a slide for you to either screen grab or scan from your phone. Um, so we hope you enjoy the tour. Um, it's, it's pretty simple to use. It's, it's great because again, if you can't hop on Roger Williams bus tour, it's the next best thing to being in your car. You get the driving directions built right in and you get a great story for about an hour and a half through, through Jersey and PA. So thanks. Thank you, uh, Amy. Um, yes, and um, unlike uh, one thing that we have that Roger doesn't have is we have sound effects um, on our tour. Um, I don't know whether Roger brings them along with him uh, on the bus. Um, also, uh, one thing Amy uh, didn't mention is that th this is all free. Um, there's, there's no, there, you don't have to pay for this. You download the Travel Stories app. Uh, Travel Stories, by the way, has uh, about 200 different tours across the country. Uh, we're just one of them. We we use them as our vendor because they have these tours, um, and there are they already have a user base um, who use their use their app as they travel around the country and look for hey what what does Travel Stories have that's interesting for me to do uh, in this state? Um, so we're we're piggybacking on uh, marketing that they're already doing. So everything about this is is completely free. Uh, free to use. And uh, I think, as Amy said, what you do is you download the tour to your phone. You download the app, but you also download the individual tour to your phone before you leave home. Um, and that way, it works purely by GPS. So, so if you get into an area where there's no cell reception or bad cell reception, like uh, Princeton, uh, uh, as one of the places, uh, is that you don't, there's no problem because it just works off your global positioning and not off of uh, any cell uh, data service or Wi Fi. Uh, so let me talk, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the, the contributors to this because we couldn't have done it without um, the many people who, uh, you know, helped us out in so many different ways. Uh, the first person that I have to acknowledge here is Larry Kidder. Um, who basically wrote the scripts for, for all these stories. Um, he knows this like the back of his hand, but I will tell you that uh, while you know, my job was to, to polish the scripts uh, and you know, put them into the format where they become an audio story, uh, the, the hours that L Larry and I spent together talking about these things we, we were just fascinating. And the things that, that I learned uh, that didn't even make it into, into these tours. Uh, was was just incredible, um, and I enjoyed that so much. And I and I, you know, so many kudos to to Larry for um, contributing uh, to writing uh, the the script for this uh, for this tour. Uh, also, one of the things you, you might have heard as uh, Amy started the tour is that after the introduction, there was music playing. Um, and one of the things is while you're driving, you know, you get turning directions, and then every so often a story, a three minute story, will pop up. Uh, but in between that, we wanted to fill the time with something that was appropriate. And so um, there's a music soundtrack that will play continuously between all these storylines uh, and appropriate music. Uh, uh, some of that music is coming from uh, the, uh, a CD that was put out by the Fifes and Drums of the Old Barracks, which is now the New Jersey Fifes and Drums. Uh, and part of it was recorded specifically, especially for this uh, project by uh, the practitioners of music, John Burkholder and uh, Donovan. And Donovan, I apologize, I know you're on this call and I'm gonna screw up your last name, but Klotz feature, I hope I got that close to right. Um, 
and uh, they recorded harpsichord and, and, and flute uh, music for it as well, which you will hear throughout uh, the tour. Um, and it was great, and they gave us a lot of information. Uh, John gave us a heck of a lot of information on on the, the on the songs that we used uh, and their appropriateness for this particular time period. Uh, so that stuff, in, in, in addition to being on our tour, is all going to be on our website. We're going to have a special page on our website um, for all, for our audio tours, including all this behind the scenes stuff. So um, if you're interested in that kind of stuff and you're interested in the music, um, you can take a, a look there. Um, the other things that we have are, you know, photographs uh, as well. Uh, the uh, participation of our partners who gave us uh, a lot of information that uh, we can use because we, you know, in addition to telling the story, we wanted to make sure people got out and visited these places that they were passing along the way. Uh, and uh, I'll introduce you to a couple of those folks in a second. But the other part of this, uh, the tour and the scripts themselves is, is when I sat down with Larry, the key thing about this tour is that it's going to be a narrated tour but we want first person accounts. We want to hear from the people who are on the ground at that time. And um, we don't want to just hear from generals. In fact, the fewer generals, the better. We want to hear from the people who were enlisted, the people who lived in that area. Uh, those are the kinds of stories that we wanted to do. And our partners were very good with helping us with get, getting firsthand accounts from diaries and letters and so forth. But of course, in order to bring them to life, we needed folks to, um, recreate those. So we have a female narrator, it turned out, you know, all our voices were, uh, the, our first person voices for this particular tour right now were, were male, because most of them were uh, from voices of folks who, who fought, soldiers who fought uh, in these battles. And, uh, and in order to bring them to life, we needed, we needed good authentic voices. And we got them from our friends at the old barracks, uh, the historical interpreters there filled in with the male voices. Uh, and you heard one of them in the story that, that Amy played. In fact, uh, a voice that appears multiple times in our, um, in our stories is a, a young fifer from New England uh, by the name of John Greenwood. And uh, he, um, an interesting story. He was, he was, you know, a fifer. He, he, he joined early on um, as a as a young teen. Uh, ended up becoming a dentist. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a spoiler at the end of that that we we reveal at the end of the tour is that we you know what happened to these people. Well, John Greenwood grew up and became a dentist, a very well renowned dentist. In fact, he designed the dentures worn by President George Washington. Um, so uh, and John was uh, John's voice was. Uh, portrayed by uh, the chief of um, historical interpretation at the old barracks, Asher Laurie. And Asher's with us today. Um, talk a little bit about that experience. So let me turn it over to you, you Asher, for a couple of comments. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, well, here representing the old barracks museum, and we were all very happy to bring these people to life. Sometimes when you read these accounts in books, you know, they seem very foreign. They seem like you might as well be reading Lord of the Rings, but actually hearing the audio, hearing these people actually speak, reminds you this all really happened. These are all experiences that these different people went through. This is all part of our hope to help, you know, the old barracks, crossroads, the historical commission lead the way going into the 250th. No state should be rivaling us going into the 250th, because New Jersey, of course, is the cockpit of the revolution. So we were very happy to be a part of this. Thank you very much, Asher. It was a lot of fun. I, I went to, I did the recording. And so I went to the old barracks and recorded these guys and tried to figure it out. And I, um, as I walked in, I said, you know, Asher, I know who you're going to read for um, as we did this, because yeah. I, I had his voice in my head as I was, as we were writing the scripts, his voice was kept coming back to me uh, for Greenwood. Um, our next uh, person I want to acknowledge is, is if you, you noticed on the, on the tour, uh, the, the story that Amy played, there were a couple of photographs there. Um, and throughout that, at particularly if you're if you're doing this remote or, or from your desktop or somewhere you're not on the tour itself so the, the idea with the tour if you're driving you put you plug the phone into your car and you listen to the tour and you just drive and you look around you're not looking at your phone while you're doing this you can look at your phone when you get out of your car or you can look at your phone or you can look at these pictures when you're looking at this from home and, and doing the tour from home so the pictures kind of give you a sense of what's there and, and, and what happened um, and those pictures came from a variety of sources uh, including, you know, our partners, uh, but quite a few of them uh, came uh, from uh, Meredith Barnes uh, from Molly Picture, Molly Picture Studios. Uh, 
Um, so uh, Meredith, why don't you uh, turn it over to you to talk a little bit about uh, your contribution. Thank you, Patrick. Good morning, everyone. Um, as you know, this is a, a phenomenal contribution from everybody, and I'm especially pleased that the app will feature um, a lot of images that I've taken at area reenactments. And when we sat down to select the different images, we made sure to pay close attention to representation. We know how important that is to our families, to our students in the classrooms, to see themselves in the rich diversity of the stories that we share. Uh, this is particularly key in engaging our audience and bringing history to life for them. Um, additionally, as an educator, I work for the NJEA, uh, I know that our teachers are going to be very excited about this resource and using it in their classrooms and incorporating it in their lesson plans, uh, both the app and the website as part of all of this. Very exciting stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you, Meredith. Yeah, we're, I already know it. it was used in a classroom yesterday. Um, uh, one of uh, the interns at uh, my work uh, is also a student teacher and she was in, in history. So she brought it, I gave her the link and she brought it into class and they were, they're actually uh, using it. And then it raised a lot of questions about how important New Jersey was in the Revolutionary War, things that you didn't know about it. Um, so hopefully all these things that, that we bring to it that, that add value from the voices to the pictures. Um, will help help people engage and see themselves. That's the idea, is that you, you can see yourself, anybody from any walk of life, you can see yourself in these stories and see a relevance to, to your life today, uh, no matter where you're from. Um, finally, um, uh, you know, we couldn't have done this without the assistance of um, our partner sites that we pass along the way. And as I mentioned, one of the things that is key is, you know, Washington crossed the Delaware uh, to fight the Battle of Trenton, but he had to cross from somewhere. Um, and what happened uh, in, in those days before is as important as uh, in telling the story and getting people into the mood and understanding what happened as the actual battles themselves. And from um, our friends over at uh, Washington Crossing Historic Park in Pennsylvania, we have uh, Catherine Hugater. Uh, did I pronounce that correct? Hugater. It's, it's tough, Gator. but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 we have a lot of um, very interesting names who uh, were associated with this, with this <laughs> tour. But Catherine, let me turn it over to you to talk about uh, your participation. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So as Patrick mentioned, I'm Catherine Hugator. I'm the Volunteer and Educational Programs Coordinator here at Washington Crossing Historic Park in Pennsylvania. Uh, and first off, I just want to say thank you so much to Crossroads of the American Revolution for including us in this incredible app. And as Patrick mentioned, we're really thrilled that this app recognizes that this story only works if we include both sides of the river. Uh, because what happened in Jersey during these 10 crucial days doesn't actually happen without that encampment at places like Thompson Neely House and Washington Crossing the Delaware on Christmas Day here at the Pennsylvania Park. But at the same time, the story of the crossing that we tell at the park, it doesn't really mean anything without Washington making that nine mile march and winning the three battles in New Jersey. Uh, so we're really thrilled that Crossroads of the American Revolution recognizes the importance of both sides and that they included us along with these wonderful site partners in a new way for people to experience history. Thank you, Catherine. And it's a lot of fun. And, and that's uh, the beauty of the tour is, as I said, you know, you, you start the tour in Thompson Neely and you're driving along the river, beautiful scenery that you see. Um, you start getting into suburban New Jersey um, and you see how things have changed there. And then you end up in Trenton and um, it really provides this, it's, it, it evokes the connection over time, um, both from a, you know, from a physical standpoint uh, and geographical standpoint as well. Um, so, you know, there are a number of questions already popping up. Let me just remind or, or say, say to folks, if you have questions, put them in the Q&A um, and we'll get to them uh, in a bit. I, I, I see already one of the questions is about uh, promoting this and how are we going to promote this? And there's a number of things that we're going to do. But to start that off, I'd like to, to turn it over to one of our key partners in, um, in pretty much anything that we do. Uh, it, from the division of uh, New Jersey Division of Travel and Tourism, uh, Jeff Vassar. Uh, Jeff, if you would like to talk a little bit as well, thanks. Thank you, Patrick. And and first of all, thanks to Crossroads for spearheading this great new project to get you know our visitors on the road uh, and coming into New Jersey to explore New Jersey's 
Revolutionary War history. Um, what we're trying to do um, over the next few years and what we have been doing in the current administration um, is to diversify what we're promoting and diversify the visitor base. And everybody knows the Jersey Shore. And what we're trying to do is to make arts and culture and our, our culinary uh, assets and the wineries and the breweries um, as iconic as the Jersey Shore. And increasingly over the next few years, um, we're going to be incorporating and growing our promotion of the uh, Revolutionary War history of New Jersey uh, into all of our promotions. And we're going to be doing that not only domestically, but internationally as well. Uh, and Crossroads has been a great partner, and we look forward to working with you more and more. Um, as far as visitors go, mobile is increasingly the way our visitors are being marketed to. The, the vehicle we are using to get to people. And it's the way that visitors are getting their information. And this audio tour format just takes it to a completely new level as it serves as their tour guide. Um, it gives, as, as you mentioned, the visitor the freedom to discover at their own pace. Um, they can choose whether to stop or they can choose to you know, move on uh, and to continue to their next destination, depending on you know, their interest or how much time they have in that particular day. Uh, and for us, um, the idea is it encourages people to stay longer. As you're driving through a community, you'll see a cool looking restaurant, you'll see another attraction, you'll see a park, you'll see some cool shopping, um, and it's going to get people to stay longer. Um, and if we can get people to stay in hotels, um, that's just a bonus. And then when they get in their car, the tour automatically picks up and uh, where they left off. And that's the best part of it. When I went on this and, and looked at uh, how it works, the GPS component is, is just a tremendous resource. Um, and as I think Amy talked about, and it's uh, the fact that you can get this on your, um, uh, on your desktop device uh, is even better because, uh, again, people like to plan out ahead. So it, you know, you, that way you can you know, get people thinking about this ahead of time um, and you just don't leave it to chance. Um, and the final thing I wanted to talk about is, as you, as you mentioned, COVID. Um, over the past couple of years, New Jersey is a drive destination and people feel more comfortable in their car. Uh, and that is our primary market. And to be able to drive people here and get them to listen to these, uh, these tours and to take more of an interest in what our Revolutionary War history is about, uh, I think it's a home run for everybody, and I'm excited for more of them. So thank you um, to all the supporters uh, that contributed to this. Thanks to Crossroads. You guys make my job a heck of a lot easier by giving me some really cool things to market. So thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, at this point, uh, we're going to turn it over um, to, the, to the questions. Um, I, I was just checking to see if a couple uh, popped up in chat. I know somebody asked about whether we pay for it or not. Um, and, and I answered that, that this is completely free. Uh, so let me switch over to the Q&A here. And uh, Roger's already uh, chimed in with, with a few questions, Roger Williams. Um, and uh, one of them is uh, for Elizabeth to Morristown. Uh, he recommends covering sites of the Forage Wars. Uh, and that's a great suggestion. Uh, and in fact, that's kind of the thing that we're doing with planning out the network is that we're looking at places where we can focus. Like we wanna, we wanna make sure that we cover certain elements in every tour that we do. So we wanna cover certain elements of diversity, certain elements of you know, on the ground and the impact of the local community in every tour we do. But each tour is going to have a focus. And Forage Wars is one of the focuses that we're going to have. Not sure that we're doing it in that particular Elizabeth to Morristown tour. We do have some other tour routes planned. We're going to focus on that. But that, those are things that are key because they're such great stories. Um, and we're looking for places that we can tell them. The idea is that we're trying to stitch together this quilt of stories um, so that we, we cover each of those uh, in a good way. Uh, another uh, question is um, about uh, the promotion. How, how are we going to promote this uh, nationally? Um, are we going to use links on podcasts, partnerships with heritage organizations, social media campaigns, etc.? 
Uh, so let me turn it over to um, our staff um, or, and or Jeff uh, to talk about that. Well, my answer is all of the above. Um, we are lucky to have received um, a sizable grant from the federal government to help us um, promote basically anything that we think is important. And so, you know, this is, you know, tops um, for us. And that is, you know, we're going to be promoting this. We're going to be promoting it as individual itineraries. Uh, it's going to go through our social uh, and digital channels. Um, we're going to get more and more into uh, print and into niche um, publications and websites. Um, and we're also, as I said, going to go internationally. Uh, we're potentially going to work with, you know, other states that, you know, I've been talking to my colleagues in, in, uh, in neighboring states to see how we can jointly, um, you know, promote this area um, as a uh, destination for um, our international visitors that, you know, this is, um, I, I think uh, Asher referred to it as the cockpit um, and it, it's true. So we're going to get that word out internationally as well, because, you know, there's certainly a good, um, good story to tell to the British market. Um, and we're trying to think of something creative to, uh, to get a hook for them, but that's how we're going to handle it. And it's going to be um, front and center for us. And obviously it's going to be front and center uh, for Crossroads as well. Um, and working with travel stories on promoting, um, promoting the audio tours on their social media, um, in their newsletters, in other opportunities there, as well as uh, from us. And also the response that we've had as we're going out and talking to people about the fact that this is coming a lot of excitement. And I know that, you know, the other tours moving forward, um, we're, we're hearing a lot of excitement about that as well. So we're, we're really looking forward to making the most of um, making people aware of this and getting people out to sites um, safely, heads up, hands free. And again, as has been said, this is, this is free to users. So, you know, we hope that it will be used uh, widely. Yeah, a key that we will see here, um, as I mentioned, um, Travel Stories, the vendor on which this uh, resides, is uh, is part of our contract. Is that they are promoting it through their to to the travelers that they deal with and 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 the markets that they um, that that they uh, use normally to to promote any of of their the, the tours that they go on there. I noticed that uh, somebody had no noted in the chat that they took their uh, their walking tour of the Newark waterfront, which I, I've done as well. I took a number of their tours before we wrote ours just to see how they work. And that's the idea is that there's links there. Once you're in the, the tour, you see, oh, what else is nearby? And then, but they're also promoting that as well. Our promotion is uh, obviously we're going to, we, we we're going to have a website on our page, which will link to all of our tours as they develop. Um, and we'll be able to, to and rely on our partners to put that out. Other things that we're looking at is um, actually physical uh, collateral, um, such as when we have more tours uh, to promote, uh, when we have our network really starting to develop is, uh, you know, the, the kinds of things that rack cards and, and then they'll be at our sites, uh, you know, you know, really inform our partners of, about how this works and how they can use it to promote uh, visitation to their site and, and to other sites nearby. Uh, and there's, so there'll be a lot a lot of social media. I also anticipate that we're going to be doing um, more of, so you saw that little, that quick video clip with uh, Sue and Darian uh, in the middle. Uh, we'll, we'll probably try to do a lot more of that kind of TikTok uh, stuff as well, um, you know, to, to build a site excitement and, and generate that and make it, uh, make it accessible uh, as well as we go forward. The key here is, you know, we, it took a long, it was a long process to get this first tour underway. It was uh, of all the routes that we're planning, it was the most complex route. Um, we knew that going into it. Um, we also knew that everything that we needed to learn and all the mistakes that we were going to make in developing the route would happen on this one. So it took us many months to do that. Um, and you know, we're announcing that route because it's, it's ready to go. But our, our real marketing will happen when we have, uh, you know, our, our, our big marketing effort will happen in, you know, somewhere later next year when we have a net network of tours. Uh, to promote, um, because that's the idea, is that you come in, you do one, you can do another, 
um, you know, wherever you are in the state, there's a tour that you can just drive on to and start taking. Uh, and so that'll be, uh, that'll be a key in our marketing as well. Um, let me see, what else do we have here? Of uh, Another question is um, about uh, more information. Um, so uh, there's actually a couple questions about more information. Uh, so if, uh, as uh, Amy noted, and you heard in the intro to the tour, when you open the tour, there's a 48 second clip that plays that's automatic. And it says, if you want more information about the tour, go to the little eye icon down there. If you click that open, there's an audio that plays, but you can also see it. And in that audio it are links, links to our, our homepage uh, at revolutionnj.org uh, and the audio tours specific page there and the information about how you can then link to other tours to learn about all the other things and other places uh, that you can visit uh, in uh, the Crossroads region. Uh, the other th question that we have is, um, uh, oh, somebody from Morvin, so, so, so what will be available there? And that, that, those are key. What we did with when we, when we came to places uh, along the tour, and you'll hear that in the stories that we tell, is the idea is that we wanna tell the story of what happened there, but we also give a little, a little snippet of something that's available that you might want to then stop and stay longer. Um, and so Morvin is one of those places where we have people actually pull into the municipal parking lot that's next to Morvin. We tell them to get out and take a, a, a look at the battle of the Princeton battle monument that's right there in front of the old municipal building. But we also tell them, by the way, across right across from you is Morvin built by a signer of the Declaration of Independence. And today it is a museum that um, I can't remember exact wording there, but you to go click and you can and you and listen to it. Um, and it says, you know, when, when you after you hear the story, go over and, and take a look at Morvin and, and, and visit the visit the museum. And that's that's what we do with all the sites um, that we have. We try to get people drive people onto the site itself if it's a visitor site. So after they listen to the story, they say, hey, you know, I'm going to stick around here and take a look. I just wanted to mention one other thing. We are already promoting with uh, some little postcards that we have. Um, Amy was at the rehearsal, handing them out for the crossing. I'm going to be there on Christmas Day, also at the old barracks on the 26th, and handed some out also at the Washington Crossing uh, Park Association in New Jersey's annual meeting. So we do have more that we have now that, uh, that we will be using as well to make people aware of what's happening, but more for rack cards in the future as well. All right, I don't see any other questions here. Is there anything else that any of the other panelists would like to add uh, before we wrap up? I think we should just uh, acknowledge that there is a plan for Chamber of Commerce and other uh, outings in the near future. I know uh, Janice has one coming up with the chamber on the 6th. So I see that in among the Q&A. So yes, we, we are actively pursuing opportunities to, to get the word out. Yes, we'll have a table um, at, their, at their luncheon and be promoting, pick, pick that timing specifically to be able to promote this. And I think, oh, was there one more question there? Just let me just double check. Yeah, yes. And so I, there's also a uh, media uh, we're reaching out to. There's a question about who else we're reaching out to. There, there are media, there, there are folks. In fact, there's a, a, a reporter who I'm going to actually drive the tour with tomorrow. Um, so that's part of our promotion as well. Um, anything else? I thought, Je Jeff, were you about to add something? there or did I miss that? No. I heard somebody. All right. Um, if uh, that is, I uh, make sure that I introduced everybody here. I didn't at the beginning, but you, you met most of them on our staff. Obviously, you know, Amy, who um, worked a lot on getting our partner information together. Uh, uh, Sue Kaufman, who is um, uh, uh, our communications person here and helped with uh, you know some of the scripting and and, and some of the uh, the other things that, that we needed to accomplish, including uh, this today, as well. So thanks to everybody there on the staff. Thanks to all our uh, our partners and contributors, and especially uh, you know as I mentioned, Larry, John, uh, Donovan, uh, in particular, 
uh, and those on the call here today, Asher, uh, Meredith, and, and Catherine as well. I want to thank uh, Jeff um, for uh, the support of um, the Division of Travel and Tourism and uh, the uh, unique things that we can do going forward. And we all look forward to that. Um, you know, it's, it's a new world and, uh, and we're trying to make sure that we are at the forefront of, of meeting those challenges and providing experiences that people uh, will really enjoy and will have uh, benefits uh, that kind of spill over from just taking a tour about history that there's, a, there's so much more that you feel more connected uh, to the world around you, uh, both from a, a cultural and civic uh, point of view, but also from an economic point of view as well. Uh, so I wanna thank everybody uh, who joined the call today um, and get out there, get your, get your phone connected to your car, drive up to Thompson Neely House and start taking the tour. <laughs>